We've spent over 10 years on air, shaping a generation of action motorsports, and now we're changing the game again. The best motorsports, the best action sports, and the best of pop culture with some epic guests thrown in. I am Jim Beaver, and this is the Gentle Tire Jim Beaver Show with Good Times by Kawasaki. Hold on tight, the misadventure is just getting started. What's up and welcome to the Gentle Tire Jim Beaver Show with Good Times by Kawasaki. Uh, this is a special one. We are dropping a super cross special on this Friday uh, because we got a couple of uh, badasses that are going to be joining me on the show today. We've got the Hill Brothers, Justin and Josh Hill. Yep, Justin and Josh both going to be joining me here on the Jim Beaver Show Uh Racing for uh, Tedder Motorsports uh, this season, the Supercross season. First time ever these two guys have been on the same team in their careers. Uh, I mean, Justin goes back. He's a 2017 uh, 250 champion. Uh, we got Josh, who uh, has been a former winner in the 450 cr- class. So, man, a couple of bangers, a couple of blue chippers, and their brothers joining me on the show today. So we thought we'd drop an extra special edition of the Jim Beaver Show on this Friday just for your listening enjoyment obviously supercross in action in detroit this weekend i will be tuned in probably live tweeting maybe i'm gonna throw a barbecue at my house uh we'll see but uh definitely want to be tuned in to supercross this weekend because detroit is always a barn burn it's always a banger and uh man we've got seven uh or we've got uh all seven manufacturers in the supercross championship in the top eight in points it's it's actually bananas year we've got uh uh, kickstart Kenny. <laughs> we got Ken Roxon who uh, won last week in Indianapolis, doing the unthinkable on a on a uh, older bike. Uh, man, what a what an amazing year we're having! I mean, um, more former and past champions on the grid on the starting gate than any time in Supercross history. Uh, anybody can win on any given weekend, man. It, it's you know, for the inaugural year of the Super Motocross Championship, I got to tell you, you couldn't ask for better storylines. This has been absolutely insane. Uh, that being said, I am stoked to uh, to have both Justin and Josh Hill on the show today. We're going to kick things off with Justin Hill, and then we'll move into uh, having the Josh Hill interview on the show. So uh, for the next hour, we got you lock loaded. We're talking some Supercross right here on the General Tire Jim Beaver Show. Good times by Kawasaki. Don't go anywhere. Uh, we will be right back and kick off these interviews. Making the most of every moment can be demanding, which is why at General Tire, we think you should demand more from your tires. For more than a century, we've made great all-around tires that always deliver the right combination of performance, durability, style, and value. Whether you're looking at the ultra-high-performance summer tires for your street rod or the best-in-class all-weather tire for your family crossover, General Tire delivers for those who demand more from their tires. Find your fit at GeneralTire.com. General Tire, the official tire of the Jim Beaver Show. Conditions off the pavement are always changing, so why settle for a light bar that just turns on and off? The Rigid Adapt is a revolutionary new light bar that will automatically select from eight beam patterns that range from a widespread 90-degree flood to a 15-degree spot based on your vehicle's speed. Try that with your knockoff light bar. A dash-mounted controller allows the user to toggle between adaptive mode beam patterns, and RGBW accent lighting. With Adapt, it's easier than ever to own the night. Don't just shred your way through any off-road rugged terrain. Get into gear with GSP XTV and let us redefine your adventure. The GSP advantage of quality and performance sets the standard for UTV axles. We strive to provide premium ATV and UTV axles to keep you shreddy ready. Kick up some dirt and get in the driver's seat with GSP XTV. With over 35 years of experience, drive with a company you can trust. Drive with GSP. For more information, please visit us at gspxtv.com today. Like what you're hearing? Do us a favor and head over to Apple Podcasts and rate, review, and subscribe to the General Tire Jim Beaver Show with Good Times by Kawasaki and never miss another show. Welcome back to the Gentle Tire Jim Beaver Show. Joining me right now is a guy who's going to be awful busy this weekend, Justin Hill. Uh, Justin, what's happening, my man? Uh, not much, man. Just cruising the mean streets of uh, Motor City right now. 
I was going to say, a uh, little bit, been a little bit cold in the Midwest. I know Indy now all of a sudden Detroit, so cruising the Motor City. How's uh, how's the weather shaping up back there right now? You know, it's not too bad. Um, you know, when we have a stadium like this, we're undercover and we don't have to ride in it. We don't really pay much attention to it. So um, I'm totally fine. I'm just bundled up, you know, in the in the city for when we're going to, you know, eat or or get get uh, supplies or whatever. But other than that, man, it's we're we're relieved anytime we get to race indoors. So. I'm not even really thinking about it much, to be honest with you. Yeah, well, let's let's talk a little bit about this season so far. Obviously, uh, the big news is, is man, you and your brother for the first time, uh, I guess, in a, a long time or probably since you were kids. I mean, racing side by side. How's that been this year, man? Yeah, it's, it's been interesting because, yeah, like you said, I mean, it's it's a it's an interesting situation or a unique situation for me and Josh because we me and Josh were six years apart. So when we were growing up, we didn't actually race each other ever. We we rode together obviously a lot, um, but you know, being different age groups and just different stages of of, of life and different stages of, of careers, um, we never really got to ro- uh, race or be competitive with each other. Um, so this has been a lot of fun, man. We've, we've, uh, you know, we've talked about doing this a lot of times. We've talked about, Hey, the prospect of let's get together and, 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 you know, team up somewhere. Um, and we're just real fortunate, man. We're, we're really blessed and fortunate to, to have the, uh, team tether and, and their interest in getting both of us to, to give us this opportunity to hang out and, and do this career together. Um, not a lot of people can say that, that they, have been able to do this the way that we've done it, um, you know, just in all aspects, you know, not obviously just this year, but just in a lot of different ways. Um, me and Josh have a very unique path in the sport in general. Um, and it's been pretty neat. The fact that we've been able to, at this point in our lives, uh, in this point in our careers, kind of come together and join forces and have fun with it. And, and we've really been having fun with it. We've been really enjoying it. So um, like I said, I'm just re- we're really, really blessed and, and we're having a lot of fun doing it. Uh, and, and we're starting to get better too. Like we're, we're you know, we're, I, I've had a couple of top 10 finishes. Josh is right there. Um, he, he's, he's, you know, been on my biting in my heels the whole time and, and, and looking into that top 10 as well. So, uh, we're getting really, we're getting competitive with this thing and improving, you know, um, I think there, the, the ceiling is still up there, you know, there's room for us to grow. So. Well, you know, and that being said, I mean, obviously, this is kind of a a different kind of feel this year, right? I mean, obviously, Team Tedder is kind of a family family atmosphere, and I I don't mean that in a bad way. I just mean it's a it's a different type. You know, when you come into the come to the track, it's a different atmosphere than when you're with you know a, a you know I guess a complete factory back team. But uh, you know, not only that, but you got Sean Bell at return, who was your 2017 mechanic back when you won the championship. I mean, it's just got to have a different feel, and it sounds like you and your brother are just having a ton of fun this year. Yeah, you know, and and when you say you know uh, a, a family organization, I mean that's that's what I think at this point in my life that I'm looking for. I mean, we're really we've been really enjoying the time um, doing it, like with just some other kind of motivation rather than um, the the typical you know the norm of of like you're saying like your run of the mill uh, race team. I mean, it's a very different feel and it's very enjoyable. Um, and like you said, yeah, Sean. Sean Bell, man, I, that's my guy, um, and you know we we unfortunately couldn't keep him this whole year, but um, for the time he was here, it was really awesome having him back and just being around. And uh, I think you know hopefully uh, some of the other guys learned some fr- stuff from him as well. Um, but yeah, that's a guy I would always I would always like to have around if I can. Um, and you know it's just it's but it's a really neat program just in general, man. We've had we've had a lot of uh, you know it's a lot of learning because me and Josh are not super familiar with the KTMs. Like I had a short stint on them and Josh really hasn't competed on them much at all. And so we're both kind of like, I would say that's the biggest hurdle is just getting, you know, to where we, you know, we can get our potential riding uh, these bikes are just different than what me and Josh spent most of our careers on. Um, but as far as man, the, the team and the feel and the, uh, just the, the general vibe around this truck is, is way more, um, I would just say a little bit more along the lines of, of where I am in life. You know, I'm a, I'm a father of two now and I just have a different, I have a different outlook on life and the sport. And, you know, it's, it's right. I think I'm right where I need to be honestly with everything. I mean, um, this, this, this group of guys that we have is a really fun group and, and it provides a really fun uh, atmosphere to race with, which, 
honestly, the sport is so gnarly. It's so rough and it's so competitive. You need, you need every little piece of kind of, you know, fun that you can add to it. Uh, if that makes sense. So I think we have that in spades. So, yeah. well, and you know, you kind of stepped away <clears throat> after 2020, uh, you know, I guess a pseudo retirement. I know you had, you know, a different career path you were going to kind of explore, but what's it like to come back now in 2023 and kind of do it on your terms, you know, because you stepped away and then you decided, you know what, I still got some gas left in the tank. There, there's something more that I have yet to, yet to accomplish, but what's it like this year to be able to come back on your terms and be doing it for you? Well, you know, you, you kind of said it like, you know, kind of a, a, a semi-retirement or, or whatever it is. And, and I never really, I never really looked at, um, looked at it as a retirement, more just like a, I, I know that, you know, there's a lot of other things I want to do in life and there's still a lot of things that I want to do in life. Right. But the, the main thing is, is that there was a certain point where I lost the love for this, you know, and it was like, I, I didn't want to continue with doing it the way I was doing it with the mindset that I had for it. So I took one year completely off. Um, and within that year, I didn't think about bikes really at all. I really didn't ride a whole lot, uh, until about that fall, uh, of 21. And then I actually did, a, did attempt to come back for 22, but I had a pretty big injury that just kept me out of that uh, last year as well. So it was like, uh, I really, it was, it was like, I took this all this time off just kind of waiting for like the, the love for it to come back. And it really did, you know, and I expected it to, but it's one of those things where it's like, you can't really see it when it's right in front of your face. You kind of have to walk around the room a little bit, and get fresh eyes, you know, and that's kind of how it was with me. And I, and I was, I was, I'm really excited now because, you know, the perspective I have now is just a really, um, you know, I'm really grateful for the chance and I'm really grateful for the opportunities uh, every single one that comes up, um, I'm just grateful for. And that puts you in a different mindset where you're, it's not like a, oh, I'm just happy to be here type thing, but it's a, wow, I get to do this. And a lot of people would love to. And I always heard that kind of mindset uh, from other people. A lot of other people would be like, oh man, you know how many people would kill to have your job. I'm like, I know, I understand. But it, it was, yeah. at the time it was like, I don't care, you know, it's like, you know, then, then have it and I'll do something else and come back. And then now I feel, I feel that love again. And that's what I was waiting for. Um, and honestly, it's just, like I said, it's different motivation, being a father now, being, a, you know, a, a, a more of a family man. It's like, it's just a different way of going about it. And I don't foresee myself getting that burnout like I did, um, you know, previously as a younger guy where, um, you know, I had these certain things, like every little thing would, would like bother me, you know, like, because it was, it was so high stakes and now it's just as high stakes, but like, I have a little bit of, like, I have some ground to make up yeah. and I have some time that I need to put in to get the best out of myself. And, you know, every little thing that I'm doing, I just really consider as a building block rather than, you know, a make or break for, any given day or weekend. So it's, it's, it's a really, I feel like I'm in a really healthy place um, to keep doing this sport for uh, quite a while now. And that's, that's something I wasn't sure where I would be uh, returning, but that's really how I feel. I feel like I can, I, this is just the second half of my, of my career now. Well, you know, and that being said, let's talk a little bit about this year because, I mean, the year you come back, you know, there's this huge buzz going around about the Super Motocross Championship. Obviously, the Supercross side of things, you're, uh, you're, you're sitting 11th in the points. I mean, you know, in 2020 when you stepped away, you were 10th. I mean, you feel like you're, you're uh, you know, watching you, I feel like you're just hitting your stride this season, man. I think the best is definitely yet to come for you and the team. But how are you feeling about the prospects of Supercross this year and, and the remaining rounds and, and what's to come for you guys? I mean, you know, for myself, I would say that I'm just scraping the surface. I mean, I just really, I've been playing it really safe this year. Um, coming off of such a long layoff, coming off of injuries and, and you know, just the, the what have you of taking time away from the sport. It's like I have to start over in a lot of ways. And the main reason um, that, uh, that I am kind of taking it slow is just because I think it's uh, it's going to be really important for me to just put in 17 rounds this year, and it's not. And if I get, you know, I've had a couple top tens, like I said, it's it's a uh, that's something that I had hoped for. I was like, if I get, you know, five or six top tens this year, I'll be really stoked. So if I can still complete that, 
I'll be really excited. Um, and that would be a goal met in my opinion, but honestly, I'm just, I'm just scraping the surface, you know, of, of this. I, I really feel like I'm not, I'm not really like on the edge of, you know, where maybe some of these other guys are kind of existing. If that makes sense. Yeah. I'm definitely riding within my means. Um, and, and that's not to say it's like a lack of effort. It's just, I'm trying to use my head and then, and make sure that I'm here for all of them, gain experience, get back into the swing of things. Because honestly, take, if you take a year off, I would, I could conceive taking a year off and then just kind of getting right back into it and like not really thinking too much of it. Um, taking a year off and then getting real injured, taking a whole nother year off. And then not really having, I didn't really have a great opportunity to ride either um, all the way until, you know, late um, in the, in the late summer last year was basically when I could start riding again after my injury. So it was, it it was like, okay, now we need to just kind of creep back into this thing. And I feel like I've done a good job at that to this point. And I'm just trying not to get ahead of myself. Uh, You know, it's just one of those things where, I think that we're right where I'm at and how I'm performing is totally reasonable for my situation. And, you know, I I just, I feel like it's only up from here to, to kind of build next time, you know, next year's thing and, and, and build on that and try to have, you know, three more things kind of knocked off the list to, to help our, our overall finishes and our overall, um, you know, performance. And, that's that's all coming and but i'm just trying not to rush it and you know I'm, I'm doing that for many reasons but you know like i said i lost all my data like i didn't have any i didn't have any any recent you know anything to go off of what this sport is shaped like so much changes so fast um and you know you got you got like probably 10 new riders like that i never even watched race before that are in <laughs> our you know overall weekend that i get to now uh, uh, watch and be around. Like I never watched, uh, you know, a uh, Hunter Lawrence race. Really. I never got to watch Levi kitchen race because he's obviously a young guy. He's from our area, but I never got to watch him on the series. Yeah. I never got to watch uh Deegan You know, all these brand new dudes that are coming in. That's the next wave of guys that are going to change the sport. And I'm going to be learning from them right now. If that makes sense. Yeah. Like I'm starting over with all my data. So, um, you know, to, to kind of, you know, from here anyway go it's like i need to to just go with the current trend of where this sport is headed and watch those guys and guys like obviously chase sex and 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 eli's a great example of somebody to watch as well but you know there's new examples for me to form my 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 weekend craft on and i'm trying to do my best to take the time and use those examples to my advantage and you know staying healthy is 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 uh number one i mean that's that was my number one for this year and i'm going to keep it that way um and like i said if we can get more top tens that's awesome but i'm going to keep it healthy so that we continue to build is there is there any ever any point where you look in the mirror and it kind of you know and obviously these guys are probably looking at you and and things like that but you look in the mirror and go oh i'm the veteran now that's kind of a weird thought right because you remember coming up through the ranks and you're the young gun looking up these other guys there a point you look in the mirror go oh man i'm the veteran now (laughs) Yeah. I mean, well, I felt like that though, you know, like I felt like that, um, for my, all my preparation for last year, I really felt like that because I had, I was kind of in a role, um, on, on, the, on a team where, uh, there was a lot of younger guys that I was kind of, uh, you know, looking at, trying to look after, you know, yeah. and help. And I did a lot of coaching when I was, when I took uh, my time away from racing and that kind of made me feel like the, the older guy too. So it was like, when I came back to the sport, it's like, it is a different mindset. Like being a young, being a young buck that just kind of just wants to get out there and destroy the world is not me. I don't know if it really ever was, to be honest. I've always been a real methodical guy when it comes to how I do this, but it's definitely not me now, (laughs) you know? Uh, And I'm trying to, I'm trying to take the best parts of that and let them work for me. And I think, I think I'm doing a pretty good job of it. You know, this year, it's just, everything is, everything is, like I said, so different, but I do feel like that, that veteran guy now. Um, but it's crazy to think that the guys that were the people that I watched, um, you know, particularly my last, 
few years as an amateur, like, you know, being, being 13, 14, 15 years old. Right. Okay. Um, those are still guys I have to race right now. And that's pretty <laughs> weird. You know, I, I watched those guys growing up, um, also. And it's like, I still have to race those guys, even though I feel like I'm the guy that's, I'm, you know, I'm 27. So in a perfect world, I think I have five very prime years left, especially taking the time off because that's just time you didn't, yeah. you know, really just pound yourself into a, into oblivion. You know, if you took those time off, you get a little bit more, you get a little refresh and that's how I feel. I do feel, feel like a 24 year old right now, but you know, that being said, 28 is right around the corner, <laughs> which leads to 29 and 30. So it's just one of those things, you know, it's coming. I'm, I'm happy about it. Like I'm happy to be in the position that I'm in right now. I don't have envy being that young guy that's stressed out about everything, you know, trying to, trying to figure it all out. It's like, I have a very, I'm in a very unique seat where I've been here before, but I'm formulating it. I'm formulating a new, a new program, but I also have many years of this, you know, uh, from the hip kind of information that I can go off of. And that really helps with my like stress on the weekends. I show up to the weekends and I feel like I'm right at home. Um, I don't show up all jittery and, and, and weird. Like I'm, I'm showing up ready to do my job and I'm very comfortable with it. Um, and that's a feeling that I wish that I had in certain years of my career, uh, as a younger guy. So I have that now. So it's like, when you have that comfort, I feel like you can push forward and you can you can push the envelope. I have that comfort right now, and I just want to keep it all in line so that I have the next couple of years to really push the envelope. I mean, that's kind of where I'm at. I, uh, as a 28 and 29 year old, I want to be peak, um, and and I think that that's doable. So, uh, final question. Obviously, we're sitting in Detroit this weekend. Well, I'm not. I'm in Arizona, but uh, you're sitting in Detroit this weekend. Um, yeah. I mean, what uh, what are, what are the prospects this weekend? Obviously, you've had a look at the track. You know what that looks like. I mean, we've seen the track layout. Uh, what's it What's it going to take for you guys to push through and get another solid finish? You know, I think that there's going to be some interesting combinations uh, in the rhythm sections, particularly. And you know, there's. There's a couple things that I got going for me this weekend. There's a couple things that I got going against me this weekend, which is kind of these flat turns and like these flat straightaways. You know, there's a lot of like uh, RC car, you know, uh, portions of the track yeah. where, you know, I, I, I thrive in the really technical rhythm combinations and, and, you know, tricky jumps. I mean, that's really where I, that's my bread and butter. Um, and there's some of that um, particularly, a good size uh, set of whoops with a kind of a run into them, which I like that kind of style of whoop and, and a couple of tricky rhythms. So I really do think there's a couple things going for me this weekend. Um, you know, ultimately I'm just shooting for that top 10. If I can climb up a couple of spaces and be, you know, seven, eight ish, I would be just ecstatic. Of course. Um, that's my, that's my target. Um, I just need to, you know, I, I would like to be in the top 10 points at the end of the season. That would, that's my goal. Um, you know, because that's obviously where I left off, you know, in 20, when I was in 10th and points is, is kind of a, is that's kind of an unfortunate like turn because I was in sixth and points before our big, uh, COVID, uh, change to the yeah. season. So then we just went and, and, and I, I really struggled the last seven races of the season because we didn't know, we, we didn't think we were coming back racing at all. So we sold the bikes. We didn't do, you know, the yeah. team decisions to just kind of, we just said, oh, we're not going to race no more this year. So we're going to kind of start over for next year. And and, um, and then they said, hey, you want to go racing? And we went, oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Type thing. And uh, I didn't get the most, you know, so that was a really, really kind of stacked against this ordeal where I went from being a guy that was in, you know, I had, uh, I had a, a, a fifth and sixth and those kind of finishes going on uh, before that break. And then I came back into like 11th, 10th, like, so, you know, it was unfortunate that it went that way. I'd like to say that I'd like to say that I'm picking up where I left off in 20, but that's not really true. You know what I mean? Yeah. In 20, my potential was, or I wouldn't, shouldn't say my potential, but my overall uh, performances were, were a lot closer to that, to the top five guys, uh, especially in speed. You know, I had a lot of pole position qualifiers and that sort of thing. So it's like, 
as bad as I'd like to say, yeah, I'm kind of right back where I was. It's like, it's not really true, but I know that I can be, and I can be that very soon. So it's not, uh, it's definitely not something that bums me out. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm like I said, I'm riding within myself, uh, as far as within my means, but I'm still kind of putting it right in that zone where, where I know that a lot of people are trying really, really hard, uh, and, and way over the top and just kind of being right where I'm at. So I'm pretty confident with it, but like I said, I'd like to be in the, I'd like to be in the, uh, you know, mid, mid in the top 10 and that's my goal. And if I can do that safely, that's what I'm going to do. Awesome. Well, uh, man, it's been, uh, been an awesome time having you on, Justin. Good luck this weekend in uh, Detroit and the rest of the Supercross season. We will be locked in on Saturday night, uh, tuned in. Uh, see you uh, put her in the top 10, buddy. Sounds good. And we'll see you here in a few weeks in uh, Glendale. Uh, I will definitely be out there. We'll definitely swing by and say hey. Cool. Yeah, come on by and see us. All right, thank you. And we'll be back with more after this right here on the General Tire Jim Beaver Show with Good Times by Kawasaki. When it's time to replace the tires on your vehicle, General Tire delivers the tires you need for both your next big adventure and your daily commute. Whether you need all-season traction, lasting tread wear, or a quiet drive, General Tires are designed to deliver whatever life brings your way. From all-season ultra-high performance tires for passenger cars and crossovers to extreme all-season mud terrain and tires for light trucks and SUVs, General Tire delivers great performance. To find your ideal tire, visit GeneralTire.com. General Tire, official tire of the Jim Beaver Show. When looking for a new wheel for your off-road vehicle, car, truck, or UTV, the choice is easy. You choose what the pros use. Rob McCachron, Keegan Kincaid, and myself, Jim Beaver, all exclusively use Vision Wheel, whether we're dominating Baja, taking the cup at Cranon, or shredding UTVs. Vision Wheel's trend-setting designs and durability will set you apart from the competition and your friends. Check out visionwheel.com or at Vision Wheel on social media to learn more. Social media? Yeah, that's on lock. It's at Jim Beaver 15 on all major platforms and hit up at General Tire and at Kawasaki USA while you're there. Welcome back to the General Tire Jim Beaver show here. Uh, catching up with Josh Hill this go around. Just got off the phone with Justin Hill. Now we got Josh uh, Josh coming on board. This is like a Hill Brothers takeover of the show, man. Yeah, what was he lying about on there? Yeah. <laughs> all good things, all good things, <laughs> man. Uh, <laughs> He's actually pretty positive on the season, and he, you know, he says he's hitting his stride. He feels like you're hitting your stride. He says, uh, you know, he goes, I think the remaining rounds, he goes, we got a little something in the tank. No, definitely. I think, uh, you know, we, I don't think we came into the season, you know, at our peak. Uh, you know, we've kind of built as the season went on, figured out a lot of things with this bike. Um, you know, I, I was riding a different manufacturer all through the off season, and you know, got on the bike in December, right before the season started for the for the monster energy supercross season. And uh, yeah, we've just figured out a lot of things with the bike and got more comfortable and it really just kind of started to grow as a team, you know, the, the team tether uh, monster energy mountain motorsports team. Uh, we, we've just started to kind of find our stride and, and working together and, and making it all just flow week in and week out. Yeah. How's it been this year racing with your brother? Cause I know like he was saying, he goes, we grew up together, but he goes, Josh was so much older. He goes, it wasn't like we ever raced against each other. And he goes, it was just a big age gap. He goes like, we were at the track at the same time, but we were just completely different levels. How is it for like literally the first time in your lives racing side by side together on the same team, man? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's really cool. I watched Justin grow up and, and, you know, turn into the rider he is now but you know when I was racing I was kind of at the top of the amateur class coming up and Justin was still on uh 60s and just getting on to 80s uh when I you know moved up to pro and then uh you know I had a couple you know good successful years real early on and then I at age 20 I broke myself off and and you know couldn't walk for a couple of years and had to step away from racing for about three years and that was right when Justin was coming in and finding his stride and, and, you know, getting picked up by factory teams. And so we, we raced together a few years where I was in the 450 class and he was in the 250 class. And then, uh, you know, I kind of stepped away from racing back in 2015 for a little while and uh, went and worked at Monster Energy. And that was when Justin was riding for the um, Mitch Payton's Pro Circuit Monster Energy Kawasaki team. So at least I got to be there with him at all his races and see his success, but we never really – got to duke it out on the track um so it's been it's been fun you know it's been it's been a good thing i I feel like us learning together testing together um you know i think we both kind of have our 
strengths and weaknesses, but together we seem to to be able to figure out a lot of things with the motorcycle and, and push each other to continue to get faster. Yeah. Well, you know, and I, I think there's one interesting thing, like there's some parallels in your career, like both you and your brother kind of went into a pseudo retirement at, at one point in the middle of your career and both, both of you came back, but it was like, when you came back, you did it on your terms. I mean, how is it now kind of riding, riding for you? You know what I mean? It's not like you've got this overarching, you know what I mean? Something where, you know, it, like you be, you know, the puppet strings are being pulled or something like that. I mean, how is it now? Like, you know, both of you, it's just so interesting to me that you both kind of had a, a, a couple year retirement and came back, but how is it now? I mean, because I feel like you're happy, you're free riding, you're doing all kinds of stuff. Like you're just enjoying life, man. Yeah, it's been great. I mean, that's that's the best part is, you know, I have Monster Energy and Mountain Motorsports and, and Fox Fox Racing, and they just kind of support me to, to go out and do video projects. And, you know, we put on an event, the Big Hill Jam, and I do some hill climbing, and I just kind of do a little bit of everything. But every once in a while, you know, a, a good opportunity will come up to race Supercross. And this year, you know, the opportunity for me and Justin to race together on the same team, um, you know, and Justin, you know, T- took some time away from racing and became a, a sheriff's deputy in the, in the County we grew up. And then after, you know, a little bit of that, he, he, I think he, he missed the racing. So, you know, having both of us have the opportunity to get on the team better program and, and do it together. That was a big motivator, you know, and for, for this year we've taken, you know, for me, I've taken it a bit more serious. I had a jump start on, on the year training you know, with a bunch of off, you know, off season races, and then, uh, you know, Justin kind of, I think back in uh, either early October or September made the decision that he was going to get back into racing. So, I, I mean, it's it's been cool. I mean, we've had a couple of races, too, where we've been stuck to each other like glue um, and battled the whole the whole race. Uh, the last the last weekend, Justin slipped away from me a little bit and got it in the top 10. And I was I was proud of him and, and stoked for him. I mean, it's uh, it's not an easy accomplishment this year with the, the depth of field. No, you know, that's what's funny. I mean, you've been around the sport for a long time. This year's crazy. I mean, I, I think what uh, in the top eight you have every manufacturer represented. Uh, you know, like you said, there's not an easy top ten anymore because – you got 15, 20 guys that can sneak their way into the top 10. I mean, there used to be years past where you had a couple of guys at the top and then everyone else, and this year it's completely different than any year in the past that I remember. Yeah, I mean, it, it always – every year when you come into it, it always seems like, oh, this is the toughest year. But, you know, you, you go back and you look at some of these years, and I, I, I think this year would probably be the second most – past champions on the gate of the 450 main. I think it was something like 2000, either 13 or 14 or 15, I think had the most past champions on the gate together. Um, and it was like 15 of the guys that lined up at Anaheim two were all past champions. So that's uh that's a pretty hard statistic to beat, but it, you know, this year it's, it's extremely competitive and the field has stayed healthy for the most part which is an awesome thing, but it makes it, it makes it tougher. You know, sometimes by this point of the season, we'll have an, an injury plague season and, and it may, may thin the herd a little bit, but this year, you know, the, 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 stay, the starting top 12 minus, you know, maybe I think Ferrandis and Muskin and uh, a couple, you know, Savachi is, is sidelined right now, but aside from them, we, everybody's healthy. Yeah. So I, here's a question that just kind of, I was thinking about it and I was like, you know, you, you're very fortunate that you, you've said like, you know, between the free rides, supercross stuff, like you go all over the world and ride all kinds of different terrain and disciplines. Well, I know part of that's riding different bikes. How is it for you swapping between bikes and manufacturers? You know, that, that's gotta be something that, you know, used to they get, takes some getting used to. I mean, a lot of guys, they go to run supercross and they're just on the same bike and they just burn laps. You, you know what I mean? Month after month after month. And you know, you're swapping back and forth jumping on different bikes that are set up differently for different styles of riding. How tough is that on you? Uh, it's really just jumping from, you know, different motorcycles or different disciplines and, you know, even different powertrains and all that kind of stuff. Like so I messed around with a lot of electric bikes. That's not really so hard. I think it's just uh, when you get really comfortable on something racing supercross, uh, you know, like I'd always ridden aluminum framed chassis in the past and, uh, Getting on the steel frame KTM, uh, they definitely have their, you know, they have their strengths, and then they have the, you know, some things that that hand, make it, they handle different. You have to figure out how to to ride the bike a little bit differently. So the first few rounds of the season, I struggled a little bit uh, on on just adjusting to the 
to the steel frame and the KTM. But ever since we found out a couple of things on the bike and, and kind of just got the whole chassis working together better, it's uh, it hasn't been bad at all. But as far as jumping on a, a hill climb bike and then jumping back on a supercross bike or an electric bike, like that is uh, is pretty easy because you're going from, you know, these different disciplines. So it's not, to me, that, that doesn't bother me too much. It's when you're just trying to, to shave, you know, tents and quarter of a second at a time uh, on a lot time and you're pushing as hard as you can. That's where you, you know, this sport's so gnarly. This is of all, everything I do, uh, even though this is what I have the most experience at, there's nothing like racing supercross. It's, uh, you know, 22 guys on the gate running into each other, trying to make it to the front, trying to jump all these obstacles, trying to navigate whoops. There's, uh, there's nothing like it. Uh, well, and I say, I'm like, you know, I, I, Supercross, I, they're, they're, I put them in the same category. You had a Supercross start where you've got everybody on the gate going into that first corner together, and it's just chaos. And I was like, that, and I don't know if you're familiar with Crandon, the off-road race, the short course race that happens in Wisconsin every year, but they've got, you know, 30 trucks that are eight, 900 horsepower going into turn one together. I'm like, those are the two most exciting starts in racing, hands down, don't argue with me, like there's no other, you know, there, there's nothing else. It's crazy. It's just Slugfest going into turn one man that, it gets my adrenaline pumping watching i can only imagine you on the gate yeah it's definitely it's definitely gnarly and it's it's exciting yeah i've heard i've heard a lot about trend and that's that's one that i'll have to go uh check out one of these days when i got some free time yeah it's definitely uh, if you ever have a free labor day weekend it's definitely the place to be man but um you know, no, let, let's go back. I want to talk a little bit about your free ride stuff because you really started doing a lot of free ride, you know, and, and you know, some progressive free ride type stuff and, and filming and content, you know, going back and forth, bouncing between that and Supercross. Is there anything like with the free ride stuff that helps out on the Supercross front or vice versa? I mean, the way you're reading terrain, is there anything that you can carry back and forth between the two? I think riding Supercross uh, and being training all the time and being as in tune with the motorcycle as you get riding supercross for a full season i think that definitely helps with with free riding and your timing of jumps you know obviously you you start to go and and hit bigger stuff you know if you're if you're doing you know like the imagination type thing you know your third fourth gear jumps but then when you get out in the hills sometimes you're, you're you're finding something that's fifth gear as fast as your motorcycle will go so it takes a little bit of you know you kind of got to get your get your speeds up and get used to hitting stuff that fast. But when you're riding supercross all the time, I mean, you're just that much more ready for it. As far as like free riding to help supercross, I think that there's definitely something to that. You know, sometimes you get stuck in a rut. You're, you're worried about just pushing every day and trying to shave a couple of tents and maybe you're fighting the bike and something. And if you can just take a day or two and go riding out in the hills and just ride some, you know, kind of rough terrain, hit some big jumps with the bike sideways and, and just get a different feel for how the bike will react. Uh, that, that I think does translate over to supercross because it's pretty easy to go out in the hills and do some free riding and hit some big jumps on your supercross spec bike. Um, you know, pretty similar suspension setups and everything for that. Yeah. So talking about Supercross this year, obviously I know, uh, you know, currently sitting 17th in the points, you know, had uh, your best results of the year coming out of Indian- Indianapolis. But, uh, you know, let's talk about the remaining rounds. We're a little bit past the midway point, but we've got some big rounds left. And I feel like you're hitting your stride, man. What do we expect uh, the rest of the season? Uh, yeah, I said it since the beginning of the season. I feel like I feel like I can I can get get inside the top 10. Um, you know, that's that's my goal. Last weekend in Indy, I was able to get an 11th and you know, I rode okay. It wasn't anything special. I just, uh, my starts were really terrible at the beginning of the season. And it actually cost me making a couple of main events. I, I was, uh, missed a couple by, by one position. And it was just cause I wasn't putting myself in the positions to, to get up there. So now I've gotten my starts a little bit better. Last weekend was the first time I started in or around the top 10 on the start of the main event. And I stayed there. So if I can just, uh, I, I've been working hard and trying just to get myself more and more dialed in, more and more used to pushing hard for a whole 20, 20 minutes plus a lap and, and just trying to work on my starts. And I think that if I just continue to do that and keep, you know, just keep my head about me and don't try to rush anything and, and take any unnecessary risks and put myself at, at, you know, in harm's way, I, you know, I think by the end of the season, I can sneak a couple top tens in there and hopefully, you know, end up inside the top 15 points and, I think that'd be a pretty, pretty successful season. 
Yeah. Well, let's talk about a little bit about, you know, the season in general. I mean, dude, I, you know, 17 rounds back to back to back to back to back. Uh, you know, you, the one of the few weekends you have off. I know this year, obviously, there was the the uh, the great flood of Oakland. So they had to delay that. So one of your weekends, you know, you got soaked back, you know, up with uh, with the, you know, the rescheduled Oakland round. But how hard is it to stay fit, keep your mind focused when you've got so many races just back to back? I mean, you fly home from one and it turns around and, uh, you know, a couple days later, you're back on the road to another round you know there's not much time to reset yourself you know if you get banged up there's not much time to recover I mean you know talk a little bit about uh, just the ruling of the Supercross calendar yeah it's it's really hard especially if you you know if you're coming into the season with a nagging injury or you, you develop some sort of nagging injury along the way that makes it really tough um, you know I've been trying my best to to keep myself healthy and, and unscathed to the best to my ability. And that's been awesome this season because every, every weekend I've been able to come home Sunday, get a little, uh, get a little workout in and just kind of shake the rust off from the weekend and traveling and then just get back to work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then, uh, you know, hop back on a plane on Thursday and fly in. We could do it yet. Luckily, uh, we've been getting to jump in on a lot of these press sessions, which is nice because you, you know, get to get to work with the local, you know, news, news stations, you get to see the track early, you get to, you know, being a privateer team, I think it's really great to, to get there a little early and shake down the bike and make sure there's, you know, no, no remaining issues from the weekend and, uh, and then get some rest and go to work on Saturday. So talking about going to work on Saturday, man, we got uh, Detroit this weekend, obviously, uh, you know, what, you know, you've had a look at the track. What do we expect this weekend out of you guys? Man, we got to ride uh, the, the press session this morning early, uh, and the track is awesome. Um, the the dirt, yeah. You know, sometimes you never really know what you're going to get in Detroit. Sometimes it's real sticky and soft, like like it is in Indy, and then sometimes it's uh, can get a little bit of a hard base, and then you know you still get a little bit of stickiness in the rhythms and in the berms, and that's that's where we're at this weekend. The, the dirt looks amazing. The track crew did an awesome job on the track this weekend, in my opinion. Um, couple of big rhythm sections with multiple different lines through it a couple big lines uh and just yeah the dirt looks good the way they built the track everything's nice and peaky and lofty which i i really like i think that when you, when you, the steeper you make the rhythm sections and the jumps the more options are available and also the slower the speeds are that you're traveling in the air you don't have to hit everything wide open you've got enough pop and lift to to, to make it to where you you know you're able to to still hit the jumps even if you don't get the drive out of the turn. I I, I like that. Uh, well, I am definitely going to be tuned in on Saturday. Looking forward to uh, seeing what goes down in Detroit. Uh, I'll see you guys in a couple weeks out here in Arizona, man. But uh, good luck this weekend, and uh, yeah, we'll be uh, pulling for you guys. Thanks a lot. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. And we'll be right back to wrap things up right here on the Gentle Tire Jim Beaver Show with Good Times by Kawasaki after this short break. Making the most of every moment can be demanding, which is why at Gentle Tire, we think you should demand more from your tires. For more than a century, we've made great all-around tires that always deliver the right combination of performance, durability, style, and value. Whether you're looking at the ultra-high-performance summer tires for your street rod or the best-in-class all-weather tire for your family crossover, Gentle Tire delivers for those who demand more from their tires. Find your fit at GentleTire.com. Gentle Tire, the official tire of the Jim Beaver Show. Looking to have some fun on four wheels? Dirtfish Rally School has you covered. Packing as much adrenaline and adventure as you can handle into high-performance all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive Subaru rally cars is where the fun begins at Dirtfish. Just 30 minutes outside of Seattle and Snoqualmie, you'll get a chance to train up to three full days with some of the country's best instructors and be put through the high-octane rush of rally on mud, dirt, and tarmac. Get started today and call 425-888-7715 or visit us online at dirtfish.com and use code 911 for 15% discount life is all about sound the sound of sports the sound of the racetrack and the sound of your vehicle don't drive around listening to this drive around listening to the sound of performance gibson performance gibson performance exhaust is the company who can turn this into this remember that life is all about sound and gibson exhaust is the sound of performance check out your next catback exhaust system headers muffler or utv exhaust at gibsonperformance.com and get more power and more sound like what you're hearing do us a favor and head over to apple Podcasts and rate review and subscribe to the general tire jim beaver show with good times by kawasaki and never miss another show 
And we're back right here on the Gentle Tire Jim Beaver Show with Good Times by Kawasaki. Big thanks to uh, uh, our partners there at uh, Monster Energy Supercross for uh, getting the Hill Brothers, Josh and Justin, lined up. Uh, thanks to both of them for taking the time to come on the show. Uh, man, what a great uh, special to drop here on a Friday for you listeners. Uh, another special we got going on right now through the end of April at General Tire. They're giving you a $70 gift card if you buy a brand new set of qualifying General Tires. If you want information on this promo, on this giveaway, you know how you do it. Well, the easy thing is, is whether you're listening here on YouTube or uh, on Apple Podcasts, JimBeaver15.com, wherever you're listening to the show, if you go down to the footnotes of the show, you know what? Yep, we have the link right there. Click that link, and boom, it's going to head you over to General Tires' site, and it's going to give you all the details on how you can get uh, that $70 off on a new set of General Tire. And trust me, best damn tires on the planet. You are not going to be disappointed uh, now through the end of April, up to $70 off on a qualifying set with their spring promotion. All right. Uh, you know, uh, I don't know. Where are we at? Yeah, I don't know. Supercross this weekend, obviously. Um, you know, I have been wrenching on my new car, Electra. We got episode number 500 of the show coming up. Big guests uh, coming up. We got Sarah Price. Uh, with her uh, car builder, Mitchell also coming up in the show. We've got uh, Lacey Blair, the one you guys have all been waiting for. She's coming up in the show. Um, I'm going to be doing a live show from Dirtfish. So, man, we got a lot of uh, podcasting and radio to come for you listeners. So thanks for the continued support. If you're not already doing it, go over to Apple Podcasts, hit the subscribe button. Go over to YouTube, subscribe to us there as well. And uh, give me a follow at Jim Beaver 15 on social media. Big thanks to all our partners in the show. General Tire. Vision Wheel, Kawasaki, Dirtfish, Rigid Industries, GSB XTV Axles, Clean Freak, iRacing, and pretty much anybody who supports us as a listen to a show, whatever it may be. Uh, thank you guys. Thank you. Oh, Gibson Exhaust. Can't forget to throw them in there as well. But uh, thanks to all our supporters of the show. Thanks to all you guys for lo- tuning in. And uh, we'll be back next time right here on the Gentle Tire Jim Beaver Show with Good Times by Kawasaki. You know what? Watch Supercross on Saturday night. You know, join Twitter, tweet with me, and, uh, man, have a safe weekend, and uh, drink some Belching Beaver while you're at it. See you next time. And that's a wrap for this edition of the Gentle Tire Jim Beaver Show with Good Times by Kawasaki. Thanks for listening. Be sure and head to Apple Podcasts, subscribe to the show, and follow at Jim Beaver 15 at Gentle Tire, and at Kawasaki USA on social media. Itching for more? JimBeaver15.com has all the latest. We'll see you next time.